Hi everybody, welcome to my uh, YouTube channel and my uh, weekly blog on um, various math and physics activities that I'm engaged in in the last week. Um, this week I'd like to uh, go over a few things. I want to start by uh, mentioning that um, I read a couple of uh, oral histories. If you go to the American Institute of Physics site or if you Google AIP oral histories, you'll get like various oral histories of physicists that you can get. And they're long, long interviews of like various top-notch physicists who um, they just have a long interview. It takes about 30 minutes for me to read them and all. And they go on and on about, you know, where they grew up, what their parents did, where they went to school, how they got into physics, what jobs they took what discoveries they made, all the ins and outs. And one of my favorite physicists is Anthony Z, who has an incredible story about how he went from China to Hong Kong to Brazil to Princeton to Harvard. And uh, he talks about all of his amazing things about how he, how he was involved in the, you know, when he was at Harvard when they had all those riots and he talks about policemen charging on you at you on horses and then about his friend Frank Wilczek and how he eventually ended up at Santa Barbara so it's a very good read and um, just if you Google put in any physicist you want in the search box you know you'll get anybody and you know Witten you can go on and and they just have all these uh, oral interviews about you know how they started. So many of them, you know, like just fell into physics and everything. But Steven Weinberg, who passed away a few years ago, Leonard Susskind, you know, but just about every uh, prominent physicist in the United States probably is involved in this project of um, oral history. So I highly um, recommend looking at it and, and reading about some of your favorite physicists. Um, the next thing I want to mention is... Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of review on group theory and updating some of my notes and everything, but in all my group theory books, you always hear about, like, tensor representations and reductions and the importance of the symmetry group. And it's not always clear why the symmetry group plays an, such an important um, role. And various books will mention about how symmetry transformations commute with... Uh, tensor transformations, and that's the key, and it is the key, but very few of them spell it out. And while I was leading, reading this book by, um, let me just see what page this is, 104, as I mentioned last week, I, this is a free book for download from uh, a site that I mentioned, um, Gage Theory of Elementary Particle Physics. It was like a 1980s, mid-80s book, but it's really excellent. But they were the first one I've seen who actually spelled out exactly in detail what that means to say that the permutation symmetry commutes with the, um, with the tensor transformation. It's kind of obvious, but uh, no one ever spells it out. And, and this time I, I did. And um, you know, if you look at equation 4107, that's your typical tensor transformation. And then they just relabel the indices, and then you sh and it shows that the permutation of the indices does not change the transformation law. So you can show how a given permutation will commute with the uh, tensor transformation, and that's the um, that's the key property. As you learn in quantum mechanics, your idea is to find a maximal set of commuting operators, and here that's done. And that's how you get all the representations and Young diagrams and all this other stuff, which I'll eventually make videos on about how to represent subgroups, induced representations, and how to do product representations and everything. So I've gone over this before, but I'm still working on it. But I'm glad I found that simple, um, simple description of what's happening that so many books like leave out or don't show explicitly. And now it's like clearer to me how to um, how to teach how to teach this. Um, the next thing that I uh, got involved in this week is at various times 
people have asked me um, what is a uh, category theory or I, I, do I have any interest in it and and uh, so on and I tell them I still haven't figured it out everything I read about it it just doesn't seem to add that much but I got an email I subscribed to um, Baez's blog and one of them is uh, Asmuth and I, um, I got an email from him about uh, a book club that's starting up to read this book The Joy of Abstraction. Now I had seen this book before on Amazon and I was about to buy it a few weeks ago but I read um, some reviews and they said something like one guy wrote how she, the author, is um, she mixes way too much uh, liberal ideology into the book. So I didn't get it for that reason. Not because, uh, you know, I'm more of a, much more of a liberal than a conservative, but I don't like in a math book having to read constantly about, you know, all these um, so-called woke ideologies. But... Um, when I got this thing from uh, Baez, who's very big on uh, category theory, I uh, decided to buy the book, which I did. It's called The Joy of Abstraction. And um, I've actually read about a third of it, and it's pretty good. I'm, I'm still not sure what category theory is about, but if you really want to learn category theory, be, before going to like one of those heavy math books or something, I think this book, The Joy of Abstraction, is a, re is a really good read to at least introduce you to category theory. And um, eventually I may get it or I may conclude that it's just hype, but um, at least I'm glad. And she's going to make a video every week on the chapter a week and you can submit questions and everything. So, um, you know, there's like a form. I've already submitted a couple of questions and you can... So it's an interesting thing. Anyway, the book is, uh, I recommend it. Yes, there is a lot of uh, woke liberal ideology spread throughout, but not an enormous amount. It's like 98% mathematics with 2% politics. Um, this is the Amazon page for the joy of abstraction, and you can read all the reviews there. It's not an expensive book. It's only like $20. Um, finally... I took a day or two off from physics and I started rereading one of my old math books that I never finished. I got about a quarter of the way through. Measure, Integration, and Real Analysis. This is another topic where for like physicists, I've always said measure theory is one of the most useless. Mathematicians love it and everything and people in probability love it, but it really doesn't have any use. I think um, one famous, um, can't remember his name right now, but he was a... Um, a mathematician and he said um, he was a mathematician and an engineer he's very famous and he had these lectures given like for a naval institute I, I don't know why his name escaped, escapes me but he said if someone told me that an airplane would, wouldn't fly on the Riemann integral but would fly on the Lebecu however you pronounce that integral I wouldn't care to fly on such a plane. So it has no practical applications, but it's used all the time in mathematics. But anyway, this book, which is available for free, it's one of these open source texts. So you just go to the link and you can download it, electronic version, and you can get it for free. You know, and uh, there it is. And it's it's a nice book. Um, Sheldon Axler wrote the book. Um, you can get the errata and everything. Sheldon Axler wrote the book um, Linear Algebra Done Right. He's written some other books. He's a very good writer and mathematician. And this is sort of like, rather than reading like Rudin's books on real analysis, I'm, for a physicist, this is a much easier read. And um, this is, I have this in PDF right now. But just to show you, it doesn't cover everything, but it covers, you know, measures, Riemann integration, Lebesgue measure, integration and uh, product measures and then Banach spaces and LP spaces. These are more interesting for a physicist and it has a couple of chapters on Hilbert spaces and a final chat and Fourier analysis and a final chapter on probability measures. This is all graduate level but it's like uh, easier graduate level and he's got also a, um, a supplement which is also you know freely downloadable 
where if you want to review like undergraduate real analysis, he sort of does that, you know, just quickly and everything. So um, real ordered fields, decadine cuts, things like that, in case you've never had that or if you forgot it. So um, that's what I've been doing this week. And um, I know I'm real behind in the videos for quantum field theory and in my uh, group theory. But um, it's a three-day weekend here. Uh, Monday is President's Day, so uh, the market is closed. So for me, at least, I'll have three days to um, catch up on work. And uh, thank you very much for watching this video. And uh, hopefully I'll uh, get some more videos made this weekend. Bye-bye.